Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook facebook.com slash radio detectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to check out my book, Slime Incorporated. Uh, It is a uh, modern detective novel, but with a lot of nods to classic detective fiction. It's a story of murder and dirty politics set against the backdrop of an Idaho gubernatorial election. And uh, you can get the book uh, either as a paperback, an audiobook through the iTunes uh, store or through audible.com or wherever fine ebooks are sold. And you can find all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And the title of today's episode is Chris Pomeroy. Mystery is my hobby. Today's story took place last month. Inspector Noah Danton and I had gone up to the Saranac Lake country to do some bird shooting. On the third day of our vacation, we started out early in the morning, and before noon found ourselves some distance from the lodge where we were staying. Getting tired, Inspector? Me? Tired? Heck no. I never get tired. Eh, phew. Let's stop and rest a minute. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Inspector. There's a log we can sit on. Yeah, good idea. (sighs) This is better. Say, Bart. Yes, Inspector. How far do you figure we've walked since morning? Oh, not very far. Well, we've certainly come a long way. Yes, and I think we might as well face it now as later. Huh? Face it? Face what? The fact that you're lost, Inspector. I'm lost? Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute, Bart, my boy. You're here, too, you know. (laughs) Yes, that's right, Inspector. But it was you who said you knew this country like your own backyard. Did I? (laughs) Yes. Bart, I have a confession to make. Oh, have you, Inspector? What? I haven't a backyard. (laughs) Very amusing, (laughs) Inspector. Well, let's get going. Get going? Where? If we're going to be lost, I'd rather be lost sitting still. We could build a fire. Probably cut through that heavy growth over uh, there. Looks like good partridge cover. Ah, well, all right. But I still think we ought to send up a smoke signal or something. Inspector, I'm beginning to think that you're a pioneer at heart. Yeah. I'm Daniel Boone without the whiskers. Here we are, Inspector. You got the gun ready? Yeah. See, this is a regular jungle, isn't it? Yeah, but it's excellent bird country. There goes one, Inspector. Take him. Yeah, I'll take him. You missed him, Inspector. Uh, What was that? Oh, easy, boy. It sounds like someone's behind that clump of bushes. Yes, and it was toward that clump of bushes that you shot. Come on, Inspector. There he is. It's a guy on horseback. Yes, and by the way that horse is acting, something's radically wrong. Jumping, Judas, Bart. Look at him go. It's no use, Inspector. We can never catch him. No, I guess not. Say, you don't suppose I hit him, do you? I don't know, but I think we ought to find out. Find out? How? There must be a habitation somewhere near. I think if we follow that horse's hoof marks, we'll come to Say, that's an idea. If I hit that guy, I want to tell him it is an accident. Oh, yes, yes. Well, he'll probably doubt that statement when you explain that the bird you were aiming at was ten feet the other side of that clump of bushes. Very funny. Very funny. (laughs) 
Something Judas by. My dogs are so tired they're going to begin barking in a minute. Don't get discouraged, Inspector. Can't be much farther. No? No. You've been saying that for the past two hours. Uh, 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 and, uh? There it is, Inspector. You can tell those dogs of yours that it won't be necessary to bark now. Why? Oh, uh-huh. A house, eh? Might well. See, that's quite a place, isn't it? Mm. Big enough to be a hotel. Yeah, it looks to me more like a private residence. Some rich man's hunting lodge, maybe. Yeah, I guess you're right. Those buildings in back must be the stable. Yep. No doubt this is where our horsemen live. Shall we go up and make ourselves known, Inspector? Good idea. I hope they got an automobile. Oh, is there anyone who can hear me? Oh, sounds like someone's in trouble. Mark! Oh, who are you? Is there something wrong, Miss? Yes. Will you help me, please? Something's happened to Chris. Chris? Chris Pomeroy. He's a friend of ours. Shot himself. Shot himself? Well, now, that's right up our alley. Never mind, Inspector. Uh, Lead the way, Miss. We'll be glad to do anything we can. Oh, thank you. Come with me. When did it happen, Miss? I don't know. Not very long ago. Mark and I were out for a walk. We, When we got back, I, we... I found Chris. Well, was it we or was it I? It was I. This is the room here. He, he's over there in the chair. Yes, I see you, uh, please stay here, miss. Come along, Inspector. Yeah, I'm coming. Hmm. Got to the temple. Do you recognize him as our horseman, Inspector? Could be. He must have been sitting here by the window reading. There's a book in his lap. Yes, and there's the gun on the floor. It looks like suicide, all right. Doesn't it? Do you really think so, Inspector? Naturally. Don't you? I'm not sure yet. Not sure? But look, Bart. There are powder burns on the guy's face. That That proves proves that the gun was held very close to Pomeroy's head when it was fired, doesn't it? It sure does, yeah. It it also proves that he pulled the trigger himself. Oh, why, Inspector? Why? Because here's the guy sitting in a chair reading a book or looking out of the window or something. Yes? Well, he isn't going to be dope enough to let somebody with a gun get close enough to him to... Shoot him so the powder marks would show. Suppose Pomeroy were asleep. At 11 o'clock in the morning, a young guy like that old come, come, but my boy. Excellent, Inspector. Your deductions are not only logical, but brilliant. Oh, However, I've... Holly, what the deuce has happened? I heard you yell at oh, the... Oh, thank goodness you come. Oh, it's awful. What's awful? Who are these men? Who's that in the chair? Chris, Mark. He shot himself. Chris shot himself? Who are you? Come on, Inspector. I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to introduce ourselves before now. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Dan. Hi. Drake? The criminologist? Yes, that's right. The inspector and I were out bird shooting. We became temporarily lost. Temporarily, he says. That guy killed me. But I still don't understand what... The inspector fleshed a partridge, took a quick shot, and a horseman galloped out of the cover. We followed the hoof marks. A horseman? Oh, then it must have been Chris. Chris? Uh, that man over there, Miss Essex? Yes. How did you know my name? I'm afraid your publicity has caught up with you. You're Polly Essex, this gentleman, your brother Mark, and your father is Calvin Essex, the publisher. That's right, but how did you know? Oh, Drake knows everything. That's entirely untrue, Inspector, but your pictures appear frequently in the society columns of the newspapers. By the way, are there other guests staying here with us? Yes. Glenn Douglas is here. He's a friend of Mark's. Dad and mother are coming up tonight. Why do you ask? Because one of you murdered Chris Pomeroy. <laughs> the kids out in the living room, uh, waiting like you said, Bart. Hey, what are you doing over there? Oh, just looking around, Inspector. According to the bottles and jars on Pomeroy's dresser, he was rather a vain young man. What's that got to do with his being murdered? Vain young men usually leave dramatic suicide notes when they take their own lives, Inspector. Yeah. Is that the only reason you think the guy was murdered? No, 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 I have others. The fact that Pomeroy's chair is facing the light, for one. I don't get it. Well, when a man sits down to read, Inspector, he doesn't face the light. He allows it to come in over his shoulder. Hey, that's right, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is, Inspector. Well, suppose we go out to the living room and uh, have a talk with the youngsters. Uh, 
I'm telling you, Drake, I don't like this. Well, neither do I, Essex. Nobody likes murder. It's absurd to say that Chris was murdered. Inspector Danton proved by his deductions that it wasn't murder. That's right, I did. Didn't I? Mm-hmm. Inspector Danton was merely stating facts that seemed obvious to him at the time. I have every respect for his opinion. That's mighty fine of you, Bart, old boy. But now, in the excitement uh... of the moment, Inspector Danton overlooked a number of things. Such as what? That's a good question, son. Before I answer it, I'd like to ask a few questions myself. Do you mind? Yes. I think you're letting your imagination run away with you, Drake. It's pretty obvious what happened. And just what do you think happened, Essex? I think that Chris went out for a ride this morning. Returned early and decided to read an hour before lunch. Yeah, but the book became boring, so he decided to shoot himself, eh? That I can understand. Some of the books I've read lately... Inspector... Yeah? Tell me, Essex, why do you think Pomeroy shot himself? How should I know? Now, look, Drake, oh, I... Oh, what's the use? Why don't you tell him, Mark? Tell me what, Miss Essex? No, Polly, you keep out of this. Doesn't concern you at all. Chris shot himself. Why, I don't know or care. But I do care about dragging our name through a murder trial. I'm afraid your name is going to be dragged through a murder trial, whether you like it or not, Essex. Now, Miss Essex, what was it you were about to say? That Chris and I were engaged. Aha! Uh -huh. Here it comes, the old love motive. Blast it, Polly. I told you to keep quiet. But, Mark, dear, if Chris were murdered, we, we can't just ignore it. Wouldn't it be better to do what we can to help? Why? We're not even sure who these men are. Why should we answer their questions? What right have they even to be here? Well, those are fair questions, Essex. If you say so, we'll leave immediately. However, it'll be our duty to report Chris Pomeroy's uh, death to the police. Then see what happens to your precious name. On the other hand, we can stay and perhaps save you a lot of unpleasantness by solving this murder. Solving it? Yes, solving murders is rather a hobby with me. He writes books about it. Mr. Drake's right, Mark. If the police come, reporters are sure to follow and Dad will be furious. Okay. You win. What do you want us to do, Drake? Thank you. Miss Essex, you say Pomeroy was in love with you. That's hardly a reason for murder. We were engaged, but last week something happened. Oh? Glenn Douglas came home. He, he'd he been reported missing in the war. It was a surprise to us all. I see. And you and Glenn Douglas had known each other before the war. He was in love with me. And you with him? I don't know. Oh? We weren't engaged, but I told him that I'd wait. Well, that makes a nice little situation, doesn't it? Glenn didn't kill him. He wouldn't do a thing like that. He's my best friend. The soup is getting thicker, by. Yes, you're so right, Inspector. Where, where is this Glenn Douglas now, Essex? Oh, I don't know. He's around somewhere. You've got to take it easy with Glenn, Drake. Really? Yes, he was in the prison camp for a long while. He's in bad shape. Oh, I understand. Please don't worry about it. Miss Essex, was it you who discovered the body? Yes, it was. Can you tell me about it, please? There isn't much to tell. Mark and I went out for a walk this morning. When we got back, Mark stopped at the stables, and I came on to the house alone. I see. Did you hear the shot? No, I didn't. Then how did you happen to discover Pomeroy's body? Why, I... I went to his room. And you found him sitting in the chair dead? Yes. And you began screaming for help? Yes. Immediately? Yes. Why? I think you're lying, Miss Essex. How dare you? If you'd come directly up from the stables to the house, Inspector Danton and I would have seen you. That's right. We came up that way ourselves. Also, I do not believe that you took a morning stroll with your brother when two young men, both of whom were in love with you, were eager for your company. I concur. Very unnatural indeed. And lastly, Miss Essex, I don't think you went to Pomeroy's room unless you had some definite purpose in mind. I resent your saying that, Mr. Drake. I'm sorry, Miss Essex. Frankly, I think you know who murdered Chris Pomeroy. I think you saw whoever it was, and you're trying to shield him. <laughs> for clues, eh? Afraid so. I should think you'd begin to feel like a corpse spending so much time with this one. The corpse is about to be removed, Inspector. I've contacted the local car now. Well, uh, look, Bart, I don't get this. Hmm? If you're sure that the girl knows who murdered Chris Pomeroy, why don't you make her tell? How, Inspector? How what? How would you suggest I make her tell? Ask her. Uh, make her talk. Well... What a doubt about. <laughs> oh, Inspector, you're terrific. Did you ever try to make a woman talk when she didn't want to? 
No, but I've tried to shut him up without much luck. <laughs> and I'm afraid we'd have similar results with Miss Essex. But look, there's ways. Yes, such as a so-called third degree, Inspector. Hmm? Well, we're cops. No, Inspector. And, uh, we're on vacation. Remember, we're not uh, acting in an official capacity at all. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess you're right at that. Besides, you wouldn't undertake the third degree anyone. Not if your life depended upon it. You're too soft-hearted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So, what are we going to do? Sit around and twiddle our thumbs waiting for Polly Essex to fall into a talking jag? No, hardly, Inspector. We're going out to the stables, and we're going to look for a horse. A horse that has buckshot buried in its hide. the stables, Inspector. Yeah. Looks like it. I'll open the door. It's kind of dark in here, isn't it? Yes, our eyes have become accustomed to the darkness in a minute. Hey, there's a horse right over there. Yes, and someone's with it. Let's get over there, Inspector. What the devil is he doing with that jackknife? Unless I'm greatly mistaken, he's picking buckshot off of that horse's hide. Come on over! I guess I haven't met you two men. My name is Glenn Douglas. Oh, yes, Douglas. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Denton. Hi. I'm glad to know you. Are you guessing what Polly and Mark do? Well, not exactly, Bob. The inspector and I were out bird shooting, and we uh, just stopped by. Oh, I see. Say, then, you were the ones who were... We're responsible for the buckshot you're picking out of that horse. I'm afraid we are. Did the horse suffer any? No, it didn't do him a bit of harm. Good. I just wondered why he hadn't been attended to before this, that's all. Well, if you were riding the Oh, horse, I wasn't riding him. It was Chris Pomeroy. You mean you don't know what just happened? Just a minute, Inspector. Uh, Are you sure it was Chris Pomeroy who was riding that horse, Douglas? Oh, yes. Both Polly and I saw him. Mm-hmm. Did he see you? See yeah. us? Well, I don't think so. Why? It might be important. Douglas, I'm going to tell you this because... You're bound to find out sooner or later, and there's some questions I want to ask. Chris Pomeroy is dead. Dead? Yes. Polly and Mark Essex think that he committed suicide. The poor devil. But we happen to know Just he a minute, was... Inspector. Huh? Douglas, you don't act particularly surprised at Pomeroy committing suicide. Do you know of any reason why he should take his own life? No, that We'd is... We'd appreciate I... anything you can tell us. But if he committed suicide, I don't want to say anything that would... Uh... Smush his character. Then there is something. Oh, well, not exactly. I don't see how it could be important. Can I say it now, Bob? Yes, yes, go ahead, Inspector. Thanks. Bob, Chris Pomeroy didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Murdered? Yeah. The inspector wouldn't make that statement, Douglas, unless we had conclusive proof. No, I don't suppose he would. That changes things, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm sorry we had to tell you like this, Douglas. Mark Essex explained to us about your war experiences. Yes, it was pretty dull. Dull? That isn't the word I've heard the boys use to describe those prison camps. Prison camps? I wasn't in any prison camp. I wasn't even overseas. Now, wait a minute. That isn't the way we heard it. Young Essex told us that you had a heck of it. <laughs> That's just one of Mark's stories. He doesn't like to admit that his best friend spent three years of the war sitting behind the desk in Washington. I see. Very interesting. Well, now let's get back to Chris Pomeroy. What are your reasons for thinking he might commit suicide, Douglas? Oh, uh, they're probably not important. I happened to overhear Mark and Chris talking yesterday. I think Chris was trying to borrow some money from Mark. There they are again. Money and love. The same old motive. And Mark refused to lend Pomeroy the money? I don't know. I get out there. It wasn't any of my business. All I know is that Chris seemed pretty desperate. Mm Mm-hmm. Douglas, will you come up to the house with the inspector and me, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. Inspector, I think that now we can be pretty sure who it is that murdered Chris Pomeroy. Understand me, Drake. I want to do everything I can to cooperate. But I can't see your point in hurting us all into this room while you search the house. What do you expect to find? A letter, for one thing, Essex. Addressed to you and mailed by someone in New York. The letter, I think, will concern Chris Pomeroy. So you know about that? Yes. 
Yes, you were, veteran friend. Overheard a part of your conversation between uh, you and Pomeroy, and I guess the rest. Glenn, what the devil I'm do you... I'm sorry, Mark. I thought Chris had committed suicide, and they wanted a reason. Yes, but eavesdropping on... I like... wasn't eavesdropping. I happened to be passing in this room yesterday, and you and Chris were in here talking. I couldn't help but overhear what you said. Well, you could help blabbing it to Drake. What difference does it make now? Mark, what was in the letter? You know what was in the letter, Miss Essex. Your brother Mark told you this morning. You're pretty clever, aren't you, Mr. Drake? That's what I'm always saying. The guy knows everything. It wasn't a matter of being clever, Miss Essex. It was merely common sense. Oh? Your family have always been very proud, quite concerned with whom they married. What's so terrible about that? Nothing, except that you, Essex, believed that your sister was going to marry Chris Pomeroy, and you took the precaution to check on Pomeroy's background. Okay, so I checked. So I found he didn't own the shirt on his back. So what? So you tried to persuade Chris not to marry your sister. He refused. So you tried to influence your sister. And how did she react? I don't know. And I can tell by the expression of her face that she isn't going to tell me. However, what she said or did doesn't matter. I'm trying to solve a murder, not solve family problems. And so far, you're no nearer to solving the murder than you were when you started. Oh, on the contrary, Essex. Inspector Danton and I are going to leave you people here. In less than 15 minutes, we'll return with the evidence that will positively prove who murdered Chris Pomeroy. Well, Bart, here's the last bedroom. And so far, we found nothing. Patience, Inspector. I can practically guarantee that what we're looking for is in this bedroom. Whose bedroom is it? I haven't the faintest idea, Inspector. Then when we find what we're looking for, how are you going to know who owns it? Fingerprints, Inspector. Now, just take a look in this closet. Say, uh, Bart. Yes, Inspector? I'm probably kind of dumb, but I still don't see why Chris Pomeroy let anyone get close enough to him to press the barrel of a gun against his temple. Nothing in the closet. You're not dumb, Inspector. Let's take a look in this wardrobe. Bart. Yes, Inspector. Look, the door to the hallway's opening. By Joe, so it is. I didn't expect this. Look out! Look out! He's got a gun! He banged the door and beat it. We can catch him. No, Inspector, wait. Huh? What's the matter? That's exactly what he wanted us to do. Chase him so he could come back and... Bye, Joe. Now what? Come with me. Hurry. You say what is this? First, you say not to chase the guy and Leave then... the door open, Inspector. Open? Well, all right, only... Here we are. Uh-huh. Look, this is just another bedroom across the hall. Get inside. Quickly now. But look, Bob. We were in this room a little while ago. Keep now. quiet, Inspector. Huh? We'll peek through this crack in the door. What's going to happen? Okay. Yes. Someone's coming along the hall. I'm not saying anything. Keep crossing to the other bedroom. Yes. And the door's all open for him. Come on, Inspector. Don't make any noise. Oh, don't worry about me. The hall is empty. He's gone into the other room and closed the door. Who is it anyway? The murderer, Inspector. You don't say. Have you your gun ready? Yeah, I got it right here in my hand. Good. Come on. All right, Douglas. What's that, What's we... that gun, Douglas? Oh, you're not going to take Oh, no. Come in, Essex. How's your sister? She'll be all right, I guess. I'm glad. It was quite a blow to her, finding out that it was Glenn who murdered Pomeroy. Yes, I imagine it was, especially when she thought the real murderer was you. Huh? Me? Yes. Isn't it true that when you and Polly were out walking this morning, you told her that you learned about Pomeroy's financial standing? Yes. How did you know? I guess, but my guessing was based on certain facts I had acquired. For example, you also told Polly that you were going to speak to Pomeroy, ask him to break off his engagement to her. What did it amount to that? I thought so. Polly wanted to talk to Chris, too, you know. She knocked on his door. When no one answered, she opened it. I see. And when she found out he was dead, she thought that because of what I'd said that I had killed him. Yes. 
So naturally, she couldn't tell the inspector and me. But I, I still don't understand why Pomeroy allowed Glenn to get so close that he could press a gun against his head. Well, that was easier than you might think. Pomeroy was quite madly in love with your sister. He was jealous of Douglas. Well, that was obvious. Yes. Yeah. This morning, Pomeroy went out for a ride. He suspected that Polly and Douglas were together. Well, they weren't. Polly was with me. I know, but Pomeroy didn't know that. He went back to his room. From the front window, he could command a view of the entire valley. I get it. He saw Polly and me and thought it was Polly and Glenn. Yes, but he wasn't sure, so he got out a pair of binoculars and he sat there watching you. Say, that's the reason. That's it. With those binoculars glued to his eyes, he wouldn't be aware of anyone creeping up behind him and holding a gun close to his head. Well, I'll be... Oh, hello, Inspector. Come in, come in. Is Douglas safely installed in the local jail? Yeah. He's taken care of. Did you uh, check the fingerprints on the binoculars? They were his, all right. What about Douglas's uh, wound? Wound? <laughs> Heck, I only shot the gun out of his hand. <laughs> wound. He's not wounded. Oh, of course, Inspector. I should have remembered what an excellent shot you are. Marksmanship is sort of a, a hobby with you, isn't uh, it? Now, wait, wait, wait. I know what you're leading up to. Yes, I know you do, Inspector. You know I'm going to say that mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, Barton Drake and the inspector take a ton of vacations. And I, I think, you know, as implausible as it is, that the reason that they do it that way is so that they can work in all of these different locations. I, I much prefer the way that Murder, She Wrote, you know, approached it in the 80s, where she had the episodes which were set in her hometown and then she'd have uh, other episodes that could be said anywhere. And when she was in her hometown, she had the Cabot Cove cast, and they rarely, you know, traveled uh, much beyond that. Having uh, Drake and Danton travel everywhere does make things a little less plausible. Uh, I mean, there's a reasons for a, a writer to travel a lot, as, again, Murder, She Wrote Illustrated, but less reason for them to uh, be taking a police inspector around with them wherever they go. All right, well, listener comments and feedback, and we've got some comments regarding O'Hara. And again, because uh, O'Hara has uh, uh, wrapped up, in fact, we wrapped up with O'Hara in terms of recording before the first episode had even gone out. One of the disadvantages of... Uh, doing the uh, recording on the schedule that we do. But uh, a couple of interesting comments here. Let's start with uh, Lawrence. And Lawrence writes in regarding the uh, Judas uh, Face episode. I thought I recognized Jeff Chandler's voice on the show, and at the end I was correct. However, he was going under his real name at the time, Ira Grossel. I'm wondering when he changed it from uh, this uh, clip... Uh, name when he became uh, when he became a Hollywood star, perhaps. Well, that's a good question, Lawrence. Uh, it does seem that Chandler kind of used both names at different times. Uh, certainly, the uh, Ira Grossel name was a lot more common when he was first getting started. Uh, by 1951, he'd already made Broken Arrow, so was you know definitely a more notable uh, actor, uh, and typically under a lot of productions he appeared as Jeff Chandler. But even into the 1950s, there were some scattered episodes where he appeared under Ira Grossel. And sometimes that's done because of various contract things and not wanting to have it known if you're doing radio programs. I can't say for sure uh, why he continued to use that uh, other name intermittently. And then I received a Facebook message from Ted, who writes, So I listened to O'Hara. Did you know the theme was written by Hoagie Car Carmichael? 
Uh, this was a pretty famous tune that was later covered by uh, George Harrison. Uh, pretty cool. And uh, this was, uh, uh, this, the name of the song was Hong Kong Blues. And I listened to it, and it is the same, uh, same song. So thank you so much for sharing that, Ted. Uh, all right, well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to David, Patreon supporter since January 2019. Currently supporting us at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, David. All right, well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then next week, next Monday, we'll be getting into Casey Crime Photographer. Next Tuesday, uh, we'll be getting into the Australian version of The Fat Man. And next Saturday... Under arrest. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.